Hey, I'm here at the City National Bank here, right on King Street. Beautiful uh, scenery here with Becky Linton from the bank. And you are the, uh, let's just say, you are in charge of what goes on here at this branch, right? Well, yes, sir. That's correct. Yeah. Um, I'm the regional manager of the Panhandle. Um, we have seven branches, and my job is to make sure all our customers are taken care of properly. And you just opened one, one in Spring Mills. Yes, sir. We I saw did. that one. That was a yeah. nice one. Yes, sir. We did. Yeah. We're yeah. real excited to serve Northern Berkeley County. Yeah. That was the only piece of the puzzle was missing. So I think we've got everything. Uh, We've got everything covered for the panhandle. You guys, and you guys do a great job. And, Becky, we're here today to ask you about, well, a couple things. I know you've been involved. I know you've been involved in the United Way. I know you've been involved in um, Habitat for Humanity. But today we want to talk to you about Christmas Cash for Kids. That's a program that is passion of your heart. And you had a great 2020. You want to share with us a little bit of what happened this past year? Well, um, of course, the COVID hit, and we had to cancel some of our activities. So I was very concerned about what we would do. I felt there would be more children, and, and it would be difficult to do fundraisers because of COVID. But I'm going to tell you, it was our best year ever. Yeah. And what I think has happened is people, um, during this time, they have, there's so many generous, loving people in this area. Yes, sir. And we do cover all three counties now. We even do things at Paul Paul, West Virginia for, for the children. So um, we were so excited. We, the money started coming in, and we thought, we're going to be able to do it. So when, I, when, we, when we met Goal, we were at Walmart. We go to the two Walmarts, Charlestown Walmart and Martinsburg Walmart. So we were um, we were there, and some of the social workers they actually purchased the gifts for um, the kids, the teenagers. Some of them in their group homes, in their homes for more for more troubled children that may have some issues that need some additional help. And I kept telling them, oh, but spend more money, spend more money. Really, this is my budget. And I'm like, I don't want money left in the bank because this is for the kids, and we want to take care of our kids. So we had truly a blessing. Uh, Pastor Tim, it was truly a blessing. And I, it, I say this all the time. This is the most generous, wonderful community you could ever live in, and I have no ever have a desire to move. I, people years and years ago would say to me, why did you stay in Martinsburg? Because I love it. I love it, love it, love it. Can you share with us a little bit of how long this meant this program's been going on and how it was founded? It was in 2006, and it was, I think, three or four days before Christmas, and I had everything completed for my Christmas and our family, and so, but I had a funny, strange feeling that there was something that I needed to do, and this is, this is really, every time something happens in my life, I have this heaviness or feeling that there's something left to do like you know how you have that feeling like I forgot something or I'm missing something what was that so I was at work and I answered an email the Chamber of Commerce did a blast and said there was this lady and if you you're familiar probably with the 211 information mm -hmm. referral yes, center well this lady named Aunt Ada worked there at the time she's long since retired but she was in a little room um, very small a little office she had one toy truck and 150 kids at the last minute that none of them had Christmas so she called Jan Callen at the time he was the director of United Way and so they put an appeal out the radio station across the street from the bank um, they were phenomenal they put an appeal out to the community so I answered the email so we got the um, we, we we thought, well, what will you need, Ada? And Ada said, well, this is a little child that needs something. So then bank employees, we um, all chipped in. We went out and got the kid, um, little boy something. And so we wrapped the gifts, and we thought, okay, we, you know, that's done. We're done Christmas. Let's go home and, you know, eat, eat, eat our Christmas dinner and be happy. Well, I called Ada, and I said, Ada, we have our presents. We're going to drop off. What else do you need? She said, there's no hope. She said, there's no hope we can do this. She said, there's just no hope. And I'm like, what do you mean there's no hope? She said, there's too many kids and there's just not, there's not enough time or money. Hmm. So um, I, I did an appeal to our corporate office. I have a local budget and then I have a corporate budget. And so I appealed to my very good people at our corporate office. Who's, they were very good Christian men. And so they funded what we needed. So we had the money. So we took the check to Jan Callen and that's when the work began. So it was 150 kids. Um, in addition, the radio station, um, pretty much broadcasting at the time, now it's West Virginia Radio, but Norm Slamenda, he um, put an appeal out. So people were actually bringing in toys. So it was a, it was a lot of different efforts. 
so all these people went to Walmart and was shopping. So little Becky was five, little Tim was six. So they, people would buy age-appropriate gifts. So I called Jan and I called the people in charge and I said, okay, is there anything else I can do? And they said, yes, you can come help wrap. Well, that's what changed my life. I'm telling you. If I have never in my life, if I was if I was in fantasy land thinking that I was in Santa's workshop at the North Pole right before Christmas, that's what it was like. It was this big room, and there was all these toys come in. We got the stuff from Walmart, and so we so one family um, maybe had four kids, so we would wrap. I sent somebody out to Big Lops to buy two hundred dollars worth of bags. So I said, I can't do this anymore. We got to have bags for these gifts. So long story short, the parents started coming in and picking the gifts up and so i would deliver them out into the if, if you've been to dhr lobby yeah i said the mothers will cry and they would say well, they didn't know what they would do they just didn't want their five-year-old not to have christmas time and time again that's what happened so then at the end of the day it, it was rainy i'm i'm feel i'm certain it was the 23rd of december and it was rainy friday night and so my, I enlisted my husband's, um, it, he, he helps me in all my, my events that I do. So we had some people that didn't um, put a phone number, so they couldn't come to the place and pick it up. So um, we set out to find these people. So we did. We went to this one house, and it was pouring down rain, and, and I thought it was the right apartment. It was a little apartment complex. So I knocked on the door, and this cute little mom, she entered the door, and I could hear kids in the background. And I said who I was and what we were doing, and I said, why did you not put your phone number? We had a terrible time. And the, the young mom said, they told me there was no hope. Mm. So that's what did it. So I said, well, I wrap these, in the, I wrap these, and your kids are going to love these. So we, my husband and I snuck in. The kids were in the back. So we, we hit them, and, and so they, they had Tana that year. Yeah. And so that happened several other cases that we delivered the gifts. And so that was the beginning of Christmas Cash for Kids. So I went home. We had Christmas. That was the end of it. So I had a knock on the door the next year early part of the year, Jan Callen said, well, this is probably going to happen every year, so let's not be in a crisis every year. <laughs> I said, so, okay, what do you want me to do? He said, we want you to chair it. I'm like, oh, my goodness, every time we do it. I said, I said, okay. So it's evolved, and it's been a community partnership, and we work – the partnership is with United Way. They're our fiscal yeah. agent. Um, they, ha they put the money, so we have to have a 501c3, DHHR, they're wonderful social workers, great people. This is a great joy for them because they actually shop with their, with their families. Yeah. So it gives them a positive thing, a bonding with these, these families, and it's yeah. a positive thing. Um, and then the radio station, it's, it's you know, you, radio station, you, you, you are on the radio all the time talking about your message. Yeah. And so we get on the radio and we talk about that message. And then they appeal to the community to help. So this isn't about one person. It's about many, many people understanding. You know what it was like when you were six years old and you come down the stairs and you had your first bike or your first uh, wagon or whatever, or first baby doll or whatever the case may be. And every child deserves that yep. because that's the special memory they have. And no matter what their life, their parents, they, whatever their parents do or what mistakes are made is not any fault of these children. They were brought in the world as innocent people. And that is why I believe in it so much. And so the friendships I've made the people I've met, the stories, the stories, the stories. And I met, there's so many sad stories yeah. from this, from, from people we privately adopted, um, the, the, the heroin addictions and the grandparents that have taken care of their kids. It's just enormous in this area. Yeah. So many great grandparents out there that we've helped and we've, we've just become friends with. Um, and story and that, after story, year after and year. And that's huge because mm -hmm. it's also a financial burden at Christmas time mm -hmm. where a lot of families don't have it. And, and it's, you know, it's, it's, it's all that way for lo most moderate income families, yeah. but these barely get by. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know what it's like. I manage a budget for a, f a young family, and it's tough, and there's nothing else. I do the report every year for Social Security, and it says, how much you left over for savings? I'm like, they don't have any left over for savings. We barely have enough to, to live on. And so 
uh, until people understand this world, you can judge, you can criticize, you can say, well, what this and that and the other, but I find that um, it's, they're very wonderful people. Most of them, they're not all. There's, some, there's always some people that, that do bad things, but they can't paint the brush with everybody because it's not the way it should be. We should be, we should love everyone and help everyone. And I know everyone, um, and, and I think the biggest lesson too is a banker, and I know many of my wonderful banker friends are generous, but it's so much different of just writing a check and donating and actually being in the trenches and seeing the real story. Yeah. And that's what changed my life. Well, and let me ask you that, because we're gonna, we're gonna show this now, and it's gonna be June in a couple of days, it's May right now. What is it? When do you guys start kicking things off? Was that September? Sep- September we start to meet, and then usually October, and then we have a kickoff really in November. Okay. We tried Christmas in July one time, and I will tell you this. Nobody's interested in Christmas in July. No, you're right. So that story about that, I uh, said so we did not do. We had sand out here. <laughs> Norm Salinda was sand out here in a sled in uh, our park or our, in our grassy area. It was probably and sweating it to was death. And not, <laughs> did not go over well. So we decided let's can that idea, and yeah. we'll, we will stick with Christmas in, in the holiday months. So nor- normally it's November. December yeah. and last last we raised thirty five thousand dollars in two months and I'm talking about pennies every yeah. penny counts is oh, what yes. we did yeah. We're not we, and the other thing we try not to do I don't want to take checks away from other agencies because mm-hmm. everybody needs oh yeah their 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 donations so what I what we come up with a group DHR Kathy Bradley um, she was somewhere and come up with this idea of every penny counts yeah. and so it's not about big dollars it's about just think and i used to say when we had the traffic count by here there's seventeen thousand people go by king street every day mm-hmm. what if everybody gave a dollar oh, yeah. nobody would be out and that's what it's all about it's just small and then the children oh, the children come in with their little piggy banks and give money and we teach children about the wonderful feeling of giving now so. you said it goes through the united way mm-hmm. let's just say for our folks that are watching this, if they wanted to give come November, December, where would they go to, to find out the give? Is there a website that they go yes, to? Yes, they go so? to United Way. There's a site for Christmas cash for kids, yes. Okay, uh-huh. all right. And They can do that. They, they set that up. And, and they, they can do online as well. And they can do mm-hmm. online. They can mm-hmm. go there. And if they got any questions, they can contact you or mm-hmm. they can contact uh, United Way mm-hmm. for Christmas cash for kids. Yes, sir. And in, and you and what day is it? Like like week before Christmas, the day before, the day of the shopping. Yeah. Uh, usually this year, I think it was like the seventeenth or eighteenth. Okay. Yeah. So yes. so mm-hmm. you get it everything at least a, a four or five days before Christmas mm-hmm. done. Mm-hmm. That way, you know all the kids are covered. Yeah. And the, what we done in, in differently, we learned a lesson. One of the big lessons the second year when they said, "Would you do this?" I said, "Okay, one one deal. We're not going to wrap. They, the parents need to wrap or guardians yeah. or whatever because they need to see and be a part of this." Yes. So that was one thing we changed. And the other thing we changed is we used to have volunteers that would go with um, with we would go out and you would have our list and the parents would or guardian would provide the list and um, we'd pick out the presents but it was so difficult so now the social worker meets the family there at a certain point in time and we can get I'm telling you hundreds of presents bought in a period of five hours so this year I think we started seven in the morning and we were done by one but it's so it's so fulfilling for that social worker to go out and do and be a part of that process and the family having a they can pick their own presents out for for their loved ones yeah and it helps with sizes and all that other stuff and everything Mm -hmm. else yes Mm -hmm. well becky we just wanted to get that out there to everybody and we want to thank you i personally want to thank you for your involvement in the community you're a big supporter of the mission but you're also a big supporter of the community you're you're a figure in the community that when your name is mentioned it's compassion it's uh with dignity and and with love that uh i mean there's probably not a nonprofit agency that hasn't been touched by your presence and the bank's presence and it's just a uh, uh, it's like you said this community is so generous and mm-hmm. full of hospitality and it is it's a great community to be part of and we wanted to do that is there anything else you'd like to share with us any other ministry or anything else in your life that you'd like to share with us before we i i, I think um Pastor Tim, you know, I've, I've been familiar with the rescue mission for many years and its work. And, you know, the people never understand. You see people along the road that are they're panhandling and um, you see people down and out. And, and until you really understand what it takes to rehabilitate someone, and it's not there's, – there's many, many people in the world um, – that don't have anybody else. Yep. I mean, you know, I had mental illness in my family, my nephew, um, and 
we, but he had a loving family that kept him from being homeless. If he hadn't had that, um, he he may not have been in the same boat to have a to have a normal life as much as could be expected. Because mental illness is is a very serious disease. Uh, so different from cancer or, or diabetes or anything else. Yes, it is. And it's un- misunderstood in many ways. And so I think my involvement with a family that called me, um, it, I was on the radio, and so they heard me, and this young woman called me, and she was homeless. She was living in a, on the river in Morgan County, and she said, please don't hang up on me. She said, I need somebody to talk to. So I talked to her for probably five years and never never met her in person and she was a heroin addict and her boyfriend was a heroin actor her child her child had been taken away so I talked to her for five years and one day she showed up at the office and she come in and she said her name and she said I just want to let you know I'm leaving tomorrow for uh, rehabilitation and going through the the program for drug rehab so I was thrilled the boyfriend couldn't go at the time because that's a rule you can't go together so the it was a long process um, I had not intended to get involved with this family, but you know the the man now they got their child back in 2014, July 21st, 2014. Um, the judge said that she was a success story. The child came back to her. The child's getting ready to turn 18, and hopefully, God willing, she'll graduate from high school. She has one more year. Um, but it's taken a lot of mentoring and a lot of of education and some people just don't have the same ability and they don't think the same way and so without somebody really guiding them to this day she will she gets frantic if I'm if if somebody asked her a question she said you've got to ask my my person that helps me I want to make sure I don't make a mistake so I think what people have to understand is is that what you do at the mission and the people you help don't judge or stereotype people because they're by the grace of God go I mm-hmm. and we do not know uh, their stories and many of them served our country and made uh, did did what they did for our freedom and so I think my story with my family was they would have she tells me that I was an angel and I say no I just was was called to do this for them but they they had many times very close to death and you just never know why people were bought in each other's lives. And I felt this was God's, God's what he wanted me to do. But I've learned so much from, and I've learned that people that judge um, others, you just never know their story, and it's a long process. Yes, and is. when you rehabilitate people, and, and the, the, one of my friends now, good friends, told me when the social workers and everybody was trying to get everything taken care of and get a place to live and get furniture and all the process and going through all the organization it's a maze getting through help and if you don't have somebody guiding you it's very difficult and I think um I I just think that people have to understand it's great to give money but not to judge and to just to pray for all these people because I know from your stories when you talked at the chamber and and trying to um People have self-esteem, and so my family, the young man, they've been together. They loved each other since high school, and he has had a job for two years. And he goes to work, and he does. He's made mistakes. He's not perfect, but he goes to church with his mom on Sundays, and they are trying hard. They sometimes still make mistakes because they're. Their thought processes are different, and yep. and and uh, nobody understands that. You got to talk to them and understand what I'm trying to say, and you do because you're shaking your head and you know exactly what I'm mm-hmm. saying. But I think um, it's it, mentorship. I, I think if there's a there, I know Casa uh, is a big part, and they help young people. But there's there's got to be mentors to help these families get, and that's what you all do at the mission. And yeah. and I know you. Um, I, I'm proud of the mission and what I'm hearing and taking. These men having pride in themselves and, and getting up in the morning and, and feeling, you know, they're con- going to contribute again to society and feel good about themselves. And, mm-hmm. and, and they have the religious part, and that's a big part, and I know the mission provides that. But it's also about building their self-esteem and having life and, and friends again and, and living normal, as normal as, as they can with yeah. whatever handicaps or disabilities they might have. Mm-hmm. But I thank you in the mission and your board of directors for the vision to look forward. And I'm glad you moved here, and <laughs> and I'm glad that, that the mission is um, is doing is, is good works because I I have when I was young, 
in the Methodist church I went to, we always, the, the, the ladies um, always wanted to feed the, the rescue mission. So the men would come out and they would go to the church. And I remember that. And so it's been a, in the faith-based community for so many years. Yeah. And so uh, um, it's well thought of and it's, it's, it's not easy work. No. It's not for the weak or the weary, I say. <laughs> So God bless you. Uh, well, thank you. And thank you for letting us come out and take some of thank your time. Thank you for the time, and thank you for yeah. telling our story about our kids. And, yeah. And uh, we appreciate the support. And that's Christmas Cash for Kids. We're going to run this now, but we're going to run it as the uh, September, October, November come and do what we can to help support the ministry also. Thank you. God bless. Thanks, Becky. Thank you.